When you say that when uh, Mr. Uh, Depp walked in, he appeared inebriated, do you recall, was he swaying? What do you, was his voice, his words slurred? What do you recall? Um, because I had come to know him pretty well at that point, he was pretty good at hiding it with people who didn't know him all that well. But you could sort of see that if you'd spent enough time around with him, you could see the little ticks slurring his words a little bit a little bit extra swaying, being a little bit more discombobulated, and being a little bit more, um, what's the word? Like, just gregarious and loose. It's not his normal mode. Okay, uh, I hate to um, go back into what I'm going to refer to as the poop incident. Um, but um, I think you testified earlier that you observed uh, on a number of occasions um, dog poop or dog pee in Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurt's apartment, is that correct? In perpetuity. <laughs> when you say in perpetuity, what do you mean? It's pretty much constant. I've cleaned up my fair share in that apartment. Um, and I think you testified that the dogs weren't trained uh, to only poop on the sidewalk. They weren't trained at all. They had their run and they'd be left at home for large portions of the day sometimes and if there was nobody there to take care of them. And at some point, they it was pee and poop on everything. Couches, sofas, chairs, the bed, you name it. So let's go to the uh, May 21 incident, which is covered on pages 10 uh, through 13. This is from uh, Drew 7. Again, uh, same thing uh, that we did for April 21. I would like it, uh, Mr. Drew, if you could just tell me the story of your role, what you saw, what you observed, what you did uh, chronologically in connection with this incident. Um, I don't remember what day of the week it was. It was either a Friday or Saturday. I want to say it was a Saturday because I was not in the office. Um, Raquel had a jewelry, her first jewelry show the next day, and the plan was for her and her friend Liz, who would come over to help, to help her specifically get set up for this. Amber was around. They were going to sit in PH5 and do yoga and paint and make necklaces and things like that. And I was sort of in and out most of the day, hanging out with them. And pretty rapidly thereafter, I don't think it was more than like 10 or 15 minutes before I heard a door open in the hallway. And then a couple seconds later, I heard a really, really loud slam, which I later learned was a wine bottle being smashed into our door, PH1. And then I heard keys jingling, and Johnny shouting at one of his security to open this. Is it right if I swear? I mean, I'm telling you here. That's okay. Yeah, you should say the words exactly as they were said. As I remember, he said, open this fucking door, get me in here. And he came in, caught eyes with me right away and beeline for me, screaming, cursing, spitting in my face. I walked calmly to leave, realized that I'd forgotten my keys and the dog, so I turned around and walked back to go get both. He stayed and followed with me, walking, pacing, screaming, cursing, spitting in my face, and I left calmly. At that point, Liz was still in the apartment, and the last look I saw of her is that she bolted around the corner and went upstairs to hide from him. Had, had Mr. Jeff ever done this to you before? No. Um, did he, how close was he to you when he was, uh, when he entered your apartment and was screaming at you? Close enough for it to be aggressive. Um, within a foot? Yes. And you said that you originally heard him say, you know, open the fucking door. When he was spitting and screaming at you, what was, what did you call him saying? Couldn't tell you. Honestly, it sounded like gibberish. At that point, I don't think I was really hearing anything. It was just, how can I get the hell out of here without something else happening? Because quite frankly, like, the reality, like, even though he's standing there in front of my face, he's also got, you know, two bodyguards right there with him that are bigger than me. What's really going to happen here? What, what were you feeling when this was going on? I'm not trying to, I want I mean... I don't think, honestly, I didn't really, I didn't feel threatened. I'll say that flat out. It just, it seemed really, really silly. I wasn't really surprised. I just wanted to get out and make sure that the girls were okay. And sometimes uh, you can say someone's spitting at you because they're like performing on a stage. and there's It wasn't like actively spitting in my right. face. It was just the nature of how close he was and the way in which he was acting. 
Okay. So you go get your keys. You get. You guys have your own dog, I take it? Yes. You got your dog. You go out. What happens next? I walk down to the hallway, and to be very, very candid, I really I don't remember in this instance whether I went to PH3 to go check on them or whether I went into PH1. The sequence of events after that as to when I actually got to Raquel and Amber or whether they came to me, I, I really don't remember that sequence of events offhand. Um, I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. So when you got to uh, Raquel and Amber, what did you observe? I remember first speaking to them specifically in PH1 in our place, but how would it, like I said, how it is we got there, I don't remember. I remember dead bolting the door, and Amber was like catatonic. She was just like a thousand yards there, just done. And Raquel was like trying to calm down herself. And I was like, just, what the fuck just happened? And she started to recount a little bit, and I went right out the door and started banging on the door to do something regrettable. He was already gone at that point. You, just so I understand that you banged on the door. PH5. I'm going to go to Drew Wan, if you don't mind. Your, your incredible architectural drawing, Mr. Drew. So tell me where you are, where he was, where you went. I was in here when Johnny came in. Doors, doors right here. The witness should reflect, I mean, the record should reflect the witness putting to PH5. Door was right there. This is in PH5. The living room's a little bit larger. I came out of the door. Door to PH1. Right smack in the middle. And I went back, started banging on the door to PH5, assuming he was still in there, but they were already gone. So what sparked you to go back to try to go after Mr. Depp was hearing from Rocky that Mr. Depp had pushed her. Correct. As opposed to Ms. Hurt. Correct. By the time you got over there, um, he had already left. Yes. Um, you said that, that Amber... When you saw them, that Amber and Rocky, I think you said Amber seemed catatonic. Yeah, she was, like, she was just a ghost. Um, how did Rocky seem? From what I remember, sort of like uh, when somebody's coming down from a, an adrenaline rush, she was just sort of like, she didn't really know what to do. Couldn't sit still, just sort of standing there and shaking. Um, so after... You had gone to try to find Johnny. He already left. What happened next? I went right back to the girls to make sure that they were okay after my own little selfish outburst. And they were, at that point, still in your apartment? They were still in my apartment. I came in. Amber had started to come out of it a little bit. Raquel had started to calm down a little bit. I started to get a little bit of information as to what happened. The thing I remember most distinctly was that Amber had Johnny's cell phone in her hand, so I took it from her. And when did you first learn about the police? We were in PH1. I believe at that point when I came back upstairs, Amber was already on the phone with her attorney. <clears throat> we went back to go take pictures of all the damage, took pictures of the wine stain in the hole. Is that the first time you saw the damage in her place, or had you already seen it in kind of the back and forth? Again, I'm a little, I'm a little foggy on that. I, want, uh, I can't say definitively whether I'd seen it before or whether that was when I saw it for the first time. So we took her back to PH3. We took photos of the damage inside, um, and I want to say that the first responders came sh pretty shortly thereafter, maybe, again, I'm, I'm really guessing here, I want to say 20 or 30 minutes yeah. at the most. The first set of police officers who were there, how long do you call them saying? Maybe 15 minutes. I was asked to greet the officers specifically because... Amber didn't want to file a report, and I said that I would speak to them to see if they, if I could, you know, get them to leave, say that everything's okay, even though we, honestly, we all knew that there was no way they could do that. I told her that I would go and greet them first. Okay, so two questions. Why did you know that there was no way they could do that? Question, let me ask you that question first. Survivor of domestic violence myself. What was your understanding of why she didn't want to have She was still protecting him. What else, uh... If anything, Mr. Drew, do you, rec do you remember either the, the female Hispanic police officer or the Caucasian gentleman saying that even? Um, I remember I was the one who walked them through <clears throat> PH3 where the original incident had occurred. I showed them the broken glass. They had already walked over the wine stain in the hallway or the, the big spill of wine, and I showed them the bolt in the door. You could see looked like the bottom of a wine bottle. 
I took them into PH5 and showed them through. Their communication to me throughout was me just pointing things out to them. The Caucasian police officer pulled me outside solo. I can't say what happened internally, so I don't know whether anybody was in earshot, whether it was just Amber and the officer having a one-on-one, -on -one, or whether there was anybody else around them. I don't know what was said either, specifically outside of what I might have heard secondhand, which has already been talked about ad nauseum. You have in front of you, uh, Mr. Drew, a series of photographs that we've uh, marked as Drew 13. And I think I'm just going to take you through them one by one, if that's okay with you. And I'm going to ask you if you remember, if you can tell me what these photos are. These are photos taken of her uh, the night of the incident. Who took the photos? Some were taken by me, some were taken by Raquel. And when you say the night of the incident, May uh, 21. And are you sitting here today, can you distinguish which were taken by you and which were taken by? No. Um, were you present when they were all taken? I can't say that definitively. Okay. Um, do you, were you present when photos were taken of, of Ms. Hurd's face, like you see on the first page of this? Yes. Um, and is this image of Ms. Hurd's face on May 21 consistent with your recollection of what her face looked like? Yes. And am I correct that unlike, it's a little hard to see because there's shadow on the right, but unlike the prior incident that we looked at where there were photos, here the injury looks like it's mostly on one side. Correct. Let's look at uh, the next photo. Tell me if you can remember, uh, if you can identify with any. These are the pictures pulled off the wall and placed onto their bed in their bedroom. Let's go to the next photo where it's clearer. Do you recall seeing this on the night of May 21? Yes, this is on the column in PH5 going up the stairs. Um, and there, there, the glass on the pictures were shattered? Yes. Starting with the first photo of Ms. Hurd's face, is that what her, is that what Ms. Hurd's face looked like when the police arrived? Yes. Uh, with the next photo of the pictures on the bed and the broken picture frame on the wall, did you show these to the, you personally show these to the, the first group of police officers that night? Honestly, this one, I, I really can't say whether I did show them to the officers. I don't recall this. And just so the record is clear, you're pointing to the photos on the bed. Correct. What about the photos yeah. on the wall? The third photo, yes, I showed them personally. For the photos on the wall, you had been in the apartment prior to this. Yes. Was the glass broken when you had last been no. in the apartment? Okay. Go to the next one. Um, <coughs> this is broken glass. I believe this is from the landing directly beneath the photo shown in uh, the third photo. And it's a landing on a staircase? Yes. Um, did you show, was that photo taken by either you or Rocky? Yes. Um, did you show that glass to the police officers who came, the first group of police officers who came that night? Yes, I did. Um, next photo. I take it even I can figure that out. That's the stairway, I yep. think. And um, that photo was again taken by either you or Rocky? Correct. Was the broken glass on the stairway depicted in this photograph shown to the first group of police officers that night? Yes, it was. Um, What's the next photo? This is the hallway where there would have been spilled wine right outside the door of PH1. And is, do you see uh, spilled wine in this photo? Yes. Can you indicate for the record where that is? Uh, here and here and here. He's pointing uh, to the sort of middle of the photograph on the right side on the floor, on the stripes. Um, and was this a, a photograph taken by either you or, or your then wife? Yes. And uh, did the police officers, the first group of police officers who came, see this on that evening? They would have walked through it before they even got to the door. And, but that's not something you showed them? No. Um, last photo in the series? Um, can you tell me what that is? Sorry. That is a wine bottle and spilled wine on the floor. Um, is this a photo that was taken by either you or, or Rocky? Yes. Um, is this something that you showed the first group of police officers that evening? Yes. Which apartment is this in? I believe this is in PH5. Okay. 
Which room? In the living room. As I asked with the other series of photos uh, that we saw, first of all, were any, are you aware of anyone who made any efforts to Photoshop or otherwise manipulate these photos to make uh, the incident and the circumstances look worse than they were? Not to my knowledge. Did you have any understanding that evening that looking at the first photo of Ms. Hurd's face that anyone had somehow put makeup on her face to make it look like she had an injury under her eye? No. With respect to these photographs generally that we've looked at in Drew 13, was there any effort to stage the photographs in any way? Absolutely not. Um, and uh, do you know how the photographs got ultimately to Ms. Hurd? I do not. So I think you testified earlier um, with Mr. Chu, Mr. Drew, I'm sort of rhyming here, um, that um, you uh, were in contact in the building uh, with Ms. Hurd on the uh, day of May 22nd. Yes. And I'll represent to you that the photos in Drew 14 were taken on that day. Uh, sitting here today, do you know who took these photos? We're talking about the two I have in front of me yes. right now? Yeah. It was either me or Raquel. Um, is this consistent with your recollection of how Ms. Hurd looked uh, the next day on May 22nd? Yes. Did you see Ms. Hurd's face on May 22nd? Yes. Did you or your ex-wife take photos of Ms. Hurd's face on that day? Yes, to my recollection. And similar to questions I've asked in the past, was any uh, effort made to stage those photos in any way? Not to my knowledge, no. Was any effort made to put makeup on Ms. Hurd's face to make the injuries look redder or more serious? Not to my knowledge, no. Um, was any manipulation of the photos done, either using Photoshop or any other similar method? Not to my knowledge, no. I'm showing you a document that's been marked as uh, Drew 18. I, I'm directing your attention to the photos uh, there and asking if you can identify uh, where these photos were taken. The photo on the first page, um, honestly, I'm not sure. I don't really remember which stairwell this was from, from which penthouse. Each, each uh, penthouse had a stairwell? Yes. Okay. Next one. Uh, both of these photos are taken from PH5, where Amber's closet was located, or what Amber used as her closet, I should say. Um, next page, same thing, Amber's closet. Same thing. Um, next page, at least the top one. The top one, same. Uh, bottom photo on that page. Bottom photo is taken from, it looks like it's taken from the landing on the stairwell of PH5 towards the kitchen, towards the Broadway side. Um, and the next page just seems like similar copies. Um, were you ever made aware, Mr. Drew, uh, of anyone destroying uh, Amber Heard's closet this way? Not to my knowledge. Are you aware of any efforts between and among Rocky Pennington, Io Tillett, Melanie Iglesias, Elizabeth Mars, or Amanda Decadene to, quote, get their story mm -hmm. straight. Not to my knowledge. Have you had any outreach from any of those people that I just mentioned to you to coordinate your story or your recollection or your testimony about the things you've testified here today? No. I did receive a phone call from Io. I want to say maybe three months ago that was to catch up and did you discuss during that phone conversation your recollection of the events that we've been discussing no today? you testified that the dogs were too small to climb the stairs correct. That correct and if the dogs in fact were too small to climb the stairs how would they be able to jump on the bed one of them was one of them was not so it's your testimony that one of the dogs could had the ability to climb the stairs and jump on the bed and the other had neither. Correct. All right. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, that completes the testimony of, of that witness. So we'll go ahead and have our lunch break. Again, during your hour lunch break, do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? Thank you. We'll see you in an hour. So we'll come back at 145 then. Is that fine? We'll have a live witness then and then. Okay, live witness at 145, so we'll take the TV down. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. All right.